Hello everybody, this is uh, a video about my uh, Tron XY XS5A 500 Pro printer, uh, my 3D printer um, that I use for various projects, one of which I'll, I'll show you in, a, in the next video. Um, this uh, printer is in a cabinet I built, the cabinet is housed in my garden shed which is well away from my uh, house so there's no danger from uh, any kind of issues uh, with the <laughs> with um, heat or anything like that. Uh, so it's, um, as I say, it's very safely housed. Uh, the cabinet itself, the first thing I did uh, was just to uh, construct a venting system. That's a 24 volt fan up there that, that vents to the outside of my shed. Um, and because some fumes obviously from 3D printing are neurotoxins. So one of the first things I wanted to do was make sure I wasn't breathing in any fumes from any plastic. Uh, and the the unit, it, the cabinet itself is is in the, is um, accessible through a double glazing unit that I put on the front of it. So that keeps in the fumes, but allows me to see what's happening with the print. <clears throat> Uh, so, uh, onto the printer itself, the rest of the cabinet I've had to basically uh, construct to allow for the slight idiosyncrasies, I've nearly, nearly said it right, uh, of this printer. Okay, so um, one of the first things, issues I had, which was a showstopper uh, with this printer, was the fact that the bed, the print bed, uh, will not stay still. Um, as soon as the uh, stepper motors uh, either <clears throat> shut off or, or activated, the bed moves inconsistently. So you end up uh, having auto leveled uh, and uh, Z offsetted. You end up with a bed that's that's just gone out of completely out of setting again, um, which causes a lot of frustrations. I know for me and many other users. Uh, there are various mods for this. I think people basically um, strap or gear the two motors together. I don't didn't really have time for that. So um, what I'm what I did, uh, and I'll show you this first of all. But first of all, I'll just mention that what I do actually do uh, when I'm calibrating is use these uh, vernier calipers, and I basically make sure that each. Um, side of this unit is is the correct measurement so that does help a lot so i'd recommend getting a pair of good vernier calipers um i bought the metal type um to aid you in getting the right measurement of the height of the bed in the first place which as i say does help now what, what i've actually done here uh probably converse to all good practice um I have put an anti-lash screw on the bottom of this unit uh, off eBay, which I then sc screwed into the holes because uh, the holes luckily go right through this uh, extra, extra heavy duty metal bar. Um, so I've got one set of screws and that anti-lash the wrong way round at the bottom. And then I used the original um, brass guide for this said screw on the top and uh, because uh, the bar's not quite thick enough to get the screws right through I've ended up with it being slightly proud and high however that doesn't make any difference so to what I'm actually doing with this um, and what I'm what I'm doing here is basically um, screwing down very slightly the, the Z screw there. So the pressure from that top uh, brass guide is enough, uh, the way I've screwed it down very gently um, and just a little bit of torque, it's enough with the grease as well, I think that helps. It's enough to stop the bed moving when the stepper motors go off or on, or if I touch the bed, or if I auto level it or whatever, um, this, is enough to stop the bed moving about so occasionally I have to tighten them up but I've not had to tighten them up that much less than I thought I'd have to uh, but that's 
for me that was a quick very dirty very greasy uh, fix for this issue and it's worked very well so far um, and uh, obviously I've got to be careful with the torque because if you over over tighten it one or the other you'll end up with um, uh, obviously not, the stepper motors not working they'll just make a a, a juddering noise but it's fairly easy to set this up with the with the correct torque of the screws okay so that's one mod um, I'll just go over the mods I've done on the frame itself um, what, what I've created here uh, with the um, the frame itself is a floating frame system hopefully you can see there I've put it on some rubber mats and screwed the uh, feet of the uh, printer in in such a way that the printer is secure but floats on these mats so we've got a kind of a floating base which works very well however I still got some lateral movement in this printer uh, because it's so big um, and what I had to do was very carefully uh, I screwed this bar into the cabinet itself and wedged it uh, and I've just got a wedge down the bottom there so now there isn't uh, any lateral movement at all it's very solid uh, the whole thing is very solid of course I, I um, checked and did a test print after I'd done all of this uh, and measured everything and it's all square so that was really another important mod because obviously vibration is not good for your prints um, at the top here this plastic uh, chain track here I found impossible to uh, set up from stock it just was all over the top top of the unit um, so in the end what I've had to do is put in uh, a key uh, extender so I'll just see if I can get my hand in there and uh, you can see that it, the extender will just come down as the print as this uh, chain moves around so that's fixed that issue that was another major issue that I had um, what and as you can see everything is well greased uh, with just standard car grease I find that grease is very good for making a smooth uh, print uh, everything runs very smoothly with this grease on and I use it very liberally um, so that's some of the main things I've had to do with this uh, with this printer to actually get it working um, it works fairly well but I have to reset the offset the Z offset sorry every time I do a print uh, I might have to auto level it again um, but once you get used to doing that kind of thing, it's okay. Uh, it's good, obviously, for big prints, but if I wasn't doing such a big print or plan to do one, I would have bought something smaller and perhaps a bit uh, a bit better in terms of quality uh, in the sense that you, this printer is quite difficult to set up um, and even carry on using. Um, but obviously you get what you pay for and this is capable of producing some really big prints and that's what I guess people would be buying it for okay so I think that uh, about wraps it up for the printer um, I'm gonna sh in the next video I'm just going to show you a little project I worked on with this printer um, and uh, what it's produced so far okay thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe